My name is David Enns and I'm a second generation missionary working in Cambodia. My parents were missionaries there from when I was three. Um, it's been uh, good for me to go back. Uh, we kind of went the long way, went through France, worked in France for a little while, and then uh, we went back to Cambodia. Growing up as a missionary kid in Cambodia was uh, uh, actually quite dangerous the last time, the last part we were there, because there was a war going on. Um, my parents uh, were given an incredible peace about uh, being there and that God would protect them, so they didn't really worry. Uh, there's a lot of things that I got into that uh, they really should have worried about, but uh, there was nothing, um, no harm ever came to us, um, and we left the country uh, just before the, the actual city fell, um, and the Khmer Rouge took over Cambodia. You know, one of the things that uh, is kind of interesting about the, the country falling was uh, as we were leaving, um, the Khmer Rouge would try and shoot the planes that we were, that we were in. And years went by uh, when, after we left the country and the Khmer Rouge took over the country. We weren't allowed to come back in. Nobody knew anything about it. Then we came back in. Uh, we started working with some pastors. And one of the pastors told me his story. And he was actually one of those Khmer Rouge soldiers that used to go and try and shoot the planes down. So I got to talk with him and say, hey, I was riding in that plane, and you were trying to shoot the plane down. Uh, this is a guy now who works with Evangelism Explosion, and he is incredible. Uh, the heart that he has for it. The whole country is just full of stories like that because of the tragedy that's been there. Now, part of the sadness of all of that is that the people have have been broken and broken to the point of, uh, sometimes we think of it as the point of no return, where they don't trust anything anymore, nothing is there. Um, deep down, a Cambodian person is an animist. Uh, over top of that is a thin layer of Hinduism, which is covered over with a veneer of Buddhism. But in reality, they're scared to death of spirits. And for the Christian to come in there and unleash the power of the Holy Spirit and the dominion that that has over top over the, the evil spirits is so exciting, so freeing. And to be able to do that, to come into Cambodia and tell people there, let me introduce you to the spirit of God, the spirit who has authority over all these other spirits. Uh, when you release that kind of freedom, um, the people are, are, are uh, it's incredible. It's, it's, the most, it's the most satisfying thing. I'll tell you, that's the thing that keeps me going back. Anytime there's a hardship, I just remember things like that. Living in Cambodia, uh, as a, uh, my wife is Cambodian, so we already live in an intercultural situation. My children are half uh, Caucasian and half Asian, uh, and we live in Asia and we live in Canada. So we live a very international life. Um, one of the things that we have to try and do is enjoy Canadian things when we're in Canada, enjoy can, uh, Cambodian things or Asian things when we're back in Asia. We try not to. Uh, get the fake Canadian thing when we're in Asia and we try not to get the fake Asian thing when we're back in Canada. But growing up there, it's just, um, I find it really uh, 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 a beautiful bridge that we have there to be able to come into a situation. Um, all my life I've spoke Cambodian, so now I speak Cambodian uh, fairly well. Um, and then my wife, of course, speaks Cambodian excellently, uh, but then she also speaks English very well. So we, we can can easily fit into either culture and that's been a huge plus and I'm hoping that that will be a huge plus for my kids as well in whatever sort of work that they go into. Um, I alluded to this earlier that we were in France and so there's also this European mission that uh, is part of our family and so um, we're, we're really international. Yeah. One of the major things that, um, that the church in Canada can pray about uh, concerning the people of Cambodia is leadership. We need to have good godly leaders. We have to have godly leaders with vision. Um, lately I've been starting to see a little bit of that, but because of their life and the different types of situations that they've had to go through, they don't plan well because they've made plans before and they've been dashed so many times. So they're not good at making any kind of a, any kind of a plan. They're, they're, their whole life is like ready to pick up and run again. 
And what we need to do is we need to see leadership that, that thinks about the long-term effect and can pray about things like that.